in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a PVP resistant base. And there's no such thing as um, a completely raid proof base, but this one has some tricks that I'm going to teach you about. Um, a couple things I forgot to mention in the video. One is that if you are placing this base down in bedrock, um, you might want to have the same sort of spike pit, which I describe later, that's up here, down here as well. So it would look like, you know, something like that. Or for example, if this is the edge of the, the stone around your, your gap, your air gap, then you would make that high enough and have sufficient padding so that a, an intruder couldn't get through very easily, you'd probably want to use steel. And then spikes throughout, like that. Another thing I forgot to mention is that this is only for keeping players out of your loot. Um, I think it's a good idea to have different bases for different functions. Like specifically, one to fight a horde, um, another one that's not nearby to do foraging and things like that where um, you'll draw some zombie activity that'll alert players of your location. So I wouldn't recommend doing any forging in here, any workshop, anything like that. Um, that keeps the heat signature down in the zone. And if you're hiding this underground, say, then it'll be harder to find. This is a demonstration of the stilts for the PvP base. It's the three block L-shaped stilt gapped by eight squares to the next stilt. Um, ignore the red blocks, they're just there for accessory support. These frames are the ones that an attacker would have to break to be able to climb the stilt. So I'm going to demonstrate that. All right, note that the stilt now is not supporting anything. So it's supported by these red frames. So the attacker can jump on here. And then if you carefully go to the left and then right again, you can make this jump here. So you, you can't do it if you're crouched. So there we go. Oh, fuck. There we go. All right, let's do that one more time. Okay, so now you're up here. Now you notice the attacker can't continue on the stilt here because he needs to be able to jump one more spot. And if he moves that block, then he can't use it to jump on. So the only other option is to jump to another stilt. And so I'm demonstrating here that you, you can reach that block there, but that doesn't give you any advantage over where you are already. You're already one block up. So. Ah, it's too hard. There we go. So that just barely got me here. Now if I add another block. This would, if I manage to get on top of there, that rep represents an advantage from just walking up here because you start at the second block. So, not gonna happen. So there you have it. This is a demonstration of how to design the gate around the drawbridge. Um, basically, You can use regular blocks all the way around, except for directly underneath. And the reason for that is that the block directly underneath provides a lip that an attacker can jump on. Like that. <laughs> Whereas if you use half blocks, 
like these. There is no there's nowhere for the attacker to land after jumping off of the roof. Additionally, when you place the door, you want to place it so that you can't directly jump into it. You need to be able to place a block to get in. Um, assuming this is land claim, that means that the attacker, even if they manage to break the drawbridge somehow and land here, they still can't get through the door because they can't place any blocks here to be able to jump through it. Meaning they'd have to break a bunch of blocks here to climb through. Or two here, I guess. You want to use the same concept of vertical denial to get the opponent stuck on the roof. So instead of just having a flat roof with spikes, use a wall around it so that if an attacker does get in there, they have no way of getting out without breaking some blocks. And hopefully they can do it before they die. <laughs> so here we have the partially completed base. We have the completed struts, the supports, and the floor, and the drawbridge. an entrance. There are blocks missing up here. I have to complete the roof. But these gaps are intentional. So what I like to do is have a three layer at least floor. Um, and the reason for this is because you can hide big box inside. Like so. We'll cut to the roof in a second. Here is the completed base. Pit of death. Drawbridge, door, goodies inside. So this cavity has space for a three layer roof. Right now there's only one. Um, I recommend as many layers as you can afford. And in fact, let's talk about the weaknesses of this. So the main way that you're gonna get raided is by people coming in from the roof. So you want to probably upgrade the roof as much as possible. The second thing you got to worry about is someone who really hates you coming to collapse the entire thing. So you want to protect the bottom of the struts as much as possible. So, that leaves the question of where to put this thing. So you can put this above ground, and that makes it more difficult to get raided, because it's a, more difficult to get on top of the roof, seeing as there's nowhere to go from here to get on here. Uh, the downside is that it makes the whole base weaker, because either you're putting it on top of stone, which is a bad idea, or you're digging all the way down to bedrock and that increases the amount of resources you have to use to build the struts all the way down there. I don't have enough nails for this. Alright. So let's say you put it down by bedrock, well, you could dig out a, a little cave and then have the wall of the cave have this other drawbridge. You see how they meet there. So 
Let me show you how this actually works. Since it's only four or five, I guess, blocks away, you can actually lower it from the other drawbridge. And then, of course, you need to place a frame to actually get in. So if you don't do it inside stone near bedrock, then I would suggest building some other structure here to perform this function. And obviously you wouldn't put any loot in here, it would just be a way to get you up to the to the drawbridge. Now, for an attacker, they can jump onto the supports, but again, they don't have enough blocks or space to jump between the struts to be able to get up to the top. And you notice I just sprained my ankle. If you actually fall from the drawbridge height as it's currently configured, it'll break your leg. Maybe. That's weird. Why didn't it do that? There we go. I guess most of the time. <laughs> There you have it. <sighs> All right, if you have any questions, um, any other ideas, let me know in the comments. Thanks.